Hey Ted, remember how last time you learned to seek, flee, arrive, pursue, and evade? That's great, because today I brought a new victim, I mean, friend. This is Ned. He's like you, but different. Meow. Go on, guys. Wander around and socialize. <coughs> oh, that's right. You don't know how to do that yet. Wonder behavior. Let's start with a simple approach. Every few seconds, go to a random location nearby. Good job, guys! Let's take it a step further. Instead of picking a random location, we'll use the sick behavior to push Ted forwards at a random angle. Think of it as a circle in front of Ted, and the sick target is on its circumference. Every frame, we make a tiny change to the angle, which creates smooth movements. Cowabunga! I could honestly watch this for hours, but I won't, because we need to get back on the path. <laughs> path following behavior. We have an ed, we have a path. We want an ed to walk along the path. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, after extensive research and experimentation, I found a few ways to do this. Option 1. The Waypoints Method It's a simple but reliable method. Huh? Since a path is just a list of points, all we have to do is seek these points in order. By giving the waypoints a radius, Ned can move to the next point without having to reach the exact locations. Additionally, Ned can switch his direction once he reaches the end of the path. So this is a solid approach, but it's not very flexible, since we have to follow the points from the beginning. Option 2. The nearest point method. It is flexible, but also less reliable. Now we don't need to follow specific points, we follow the path curve instead. At each frame we find the nearest point on the path, add a small offset, and that will be Ned's sick target. A variation of this uses the nearest point on the path to a predicted future position. Another variation I have seen applies the steering force only when the prediction diverges from the path radius. So that was interesting. You may also want to consider handling looping path and using arrival behavior at the end of the path. Let me know if this is something you want to see me cover as well. We successfully followed the path how about walls? Wall following behavior. Here, the movement is parallel to the wall with an offset distance. So, in theory, something similar to path following might work. 
project the predicted position on the wall, give it an offset using the surface normal, and use it as a seek target. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to project the point on a collision shape in Godot, at least as far as I know. What? But not to worry, because I have an alternative idea. Imagine you're in a dark room, you are trying to find a wall and follow it as long as you can. What do you do? You extend your arms until you can touch the wall and keep moving alongside it. That helps maintain a constant distance from the wall and react if it changes direction. Yep, we'll use raycasts to detect the walls. Ted essentially has two invisible arms now, so the new plan is the old plan, kind of. Whenever Ted detects a wall, we use the collision point and surface normal to create the seek target. We can use them to estimate the point on the wall that's nearest to Ted's predicted position, and simply add the offset by using the surface normal. And here we go! It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. We've discovered some interesting behaviors today, but there are still plenty more to see. Oh yeah. Next time on part 3.